I love finding places like this. Listen to the birds. It's great to be able to camp for free and find these vast spaces still available. But in order to do it, uh, you really have to make the best of your resources. And one of the great resources you have out here is the sun. Being able to capture that sunlight and convert it to energy is one of the real bonuses of a system for camping in the backwoods. And so this time I'm gonna talk more about the solar system I have on my trailer, and what works for me, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Well, I'm sure some of you might have seen my first video on my solar panels, adding solar panels to an A-liner. Well, they've been up there for almost two and a half years, a lot of changes, and like other designs, they always have to progress. So, it's time for some updates. Here's adding solar panels to an A-liner, part two. With any new design or experiment, there's always that need for continuous improvement. And that's what I want to show here. What you're going to see is clips for over the last few months as I've upgraded this design. As well as show you how I've made it a little bit easier over time. A-liners and other A-frame campers have a big advantage over their larger cousins due to their compact design. The slope of the roof is perfect for North American sun. But the trade-off is that the fold-up roof will only hold so much extra weight before it is hard to lift. That's the reason I chose lightweight flexible panels and not the heavier glass panels for the roof of my A-liner. I also added a frame mounted controller and two deep cycle batteries for power storage. Well the only other ingredient to make this work was a little gift from mother nature called sunlight. My original design two and a half years ago was based on flexible panels glued to an aluminum frame. As you may have seen in my solar trouble video, the glue was not only unnecessary but was a big problem to remove. Having a detachable frame was definitely a big bonus, but my initial system of latches and locks proved clumsy, especially when I had to lower the roof each time I wanted to unlatch the upper half. Before heading out on a big trip last winter, I removed the panels from the roof for an upgrade in the comfort of my garage. First of all, the panels don't look that bad. There's no major scratches or anything like that. There is a little bit of a blue haze, which I'm gonna look into, but overall they're in really good shape. One problem that was very apparent was that the adhesive I used reacted badly with the zinc-plated carbon steel washers and screws. After removing them all, I replaced them with stainless steel washers and higher grade screws. No sealant was necessary. One of the first things that I want to modify are these uh, latches at the end, these clasps. Uh, because the ones at the far end, which are up at the peak of the A-liner, I can't take them off without taking the trailer down. So I want to replace them. And my first instinct was something like a spring latch. This is kind of like a, a spring latch they use in farms uh, on fences. Great concept, but it's very big and bulky. It's uh, a little bit of overkill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use regular barrel latches. You these are the typical one you see at, uh, in, on a home gate. And cut out this section and add a spring like I've done here. So this is a little bit lighter. Um, comes back, springs back, and I can lock it in place. So I think these spring latches will work well for my purpose, so uh, I'm going to install them. Adding springs to the barrel latches was pretty easy, but since there's something reasonably close to that on Amazon, I won't go into a lot of detail. So I originally just had these clasps on the end, but now I've added these new spring latches, which spring into place, keep that down securely, and I can use the spring latch to keep it up. I've got that on all four corners, but the ones at the top are a little bit different. 
they have them, they're spring loaded, but I also have a cable. And I'll show you how that cable works. Now because it's up the trailer, I can't access it. So what I did is I attached a cable to it, and I've got a lever down here. So when I move the lever, it detaches the post. That way I can move the panel. But I also did some changes underneath. I now have a swing out support with a chain so it can, it can be brought out and held in place like that. As for modifications to the trailer roof, I added four supports where the panels go, each riveted in place and all having holes for the spring bolts. I also used the strike plates from the barrel bolts to guide the bolts in place. Here's a shot of the roof with the panels in position. With the barrel bolts acting as pivots, I can easily change the angle of the panels for more sun exposure. The aluminum rod I originally used to secure the panels is now repurposed to provide wind support for the panels in the angled position. Here's a shot of the revised array ready for its first test. A bungee cord stops the leg support from flopping around when it is not in use. The only thing missing is the big road trip to see how well it performs. So when the morning sun's at the side, I just come up here, hit the latch, this one, and do the bungee, and put in the lock. There. Now it gets the morning sun. At noon, you can lay it flat. So during the midday, I have the panels flat. But in late afternoon, I actually want to tilt the panels to the west so I get even more sunlight. Now, because the last time I used the support underneath, I was pointing the opposite direction. I have to do a little bit of a flip. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing I do is release the top and then the bottom. And then I can flip it up. But the support's going the wrong way. So what I have to do is detach the support, do a little bit of a flip, and then put it in the bottom hole, which is right like that, and like that. Now, I can let that down, and open up the other side. Like that. And it's now pointing the right direction. After my road test, I further refined the design by making guides out of aluminum to make it easy to switch the leg support around. These were secured to the top end of the panel frame with rivets. I put little guides, aluminum guides, on the edges so when you're trying to align the support from the other end, it just guides it in place. And the other one is I put ventilation holes all up and down the support of the panels. The reason being it allows air to flow from the bottom of the panels up so they won't get too hot underneath. So a legitimate concern some viewers may have is how well does this perform when it's really windy? Well when it's flat on the roof and it's secured by these four posts, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Not just while I'm camping, but when I'm on the highway. And so you go flying through here, there's crosswinds and all that. It has stayed secure. I've never had a problem when it's flat. However, when I have it up like this, when it's hinged, you do have to make sure it's prop properly secure. And what I do is I've got 
Velcro straps. I'll just take one off here to show you. And I just strap the bar top and bottom with these. The midpoint is no issue, but when it's strapped here and it's strapped here, you shouldn't have any problems. And believe me, I know because I've been through some really, really nasty windstorms. Having flexible panels on the roof of an A-liner is no problem at all. They're streamlined, they're secure, they don't flap or anything like that. I know there's a popular uh, travel couple that really put down the flexible panels, but they had a motor home. They were really high, they glued them, and they were scraping branches. But an A-frame is low profile. It's perfect for flexible panels. Another advantage of my original design is I made it so the panels could come off and I had 20 extra feet of cable so I could put it on a picnic table or away from a tree or whatever. And I would just wrap the extra cable around the propane tank. Well, I thought of a better idea and that was an extension cord. It's 20 feet of cable with the solar connectors and all I have to do is disconnect these two connectors, add the extension cord and I can do the same thing but I don't have to leave it on the propane tank. I can store it safely indoors instead. As mentioned in some of my other videos, one of my panels failed and I had to replace it. And I'm not really happy with that. A solar panel, I don't care what type it was, should not fail after just two years. So I've got a little bit of research and I'm gonna be talking to some manufacturers and find out why that happens because I certainly don't want it to happen again. When you're depending on solar energy, when you're traveling, failure is not an option. The panel failure will be discussed in another video, but I did take this opportunity for another improvement, switching out the old 10 amp controller with a new 20 amp one. The new panel was much more efficient at generating amps, whereas the old one never peaked beyond 8 amps combined. It's good to see these panels are improving in efficiency. I know every A-frame has a different configuration on the roof. Um, those silly bubble windows, I really think they should offer at least some models without one in the front so that people have the option of solar panels. In reality, I don't know why no A-frame manufacturer to date hasn't thought about solar panels on the roof. It just seems like the perfect uh, angle, uh, everything. I don't know why they don't do it. Anyway, it's worked well for me. Um, I think it'll work well for you. Probably you're going to have to have a little different the design than I have and guaranteed I've got a few tweaks I still want to do with mine as well. So most of what I talked about in this video is the mechanics of my own personal setup. I really didn't talk about performance or uh, how well the panels do over time. So that's going to be the next video. Well I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my other ones as well. I've always got more ideas, so always check back.